so as Wayne mentioned, uh, I'm a software engineer at Convex, uh, and today I'm gonna talk about coaxing AI agents to write full stack applications. So specifically, I'm gonna dive a little bit into um, like the behind the scenes of building Chef, which is our AI app builder, since I've been working on that for the past few months. So um, before I get started, uh, who here knows what Convex is? All right, sick. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know what Convex is, Convex is a reactive database um, that allows you to define your database schema and database functions uh, directly in TypeScript. And this, all these types are directly accessible on your front end, and you're able to subscribe with these, to subscribe to these using use hooks. And what's really cool about this is that at, um, the time that you submit your code, we're able to, or the, the time that you deploy your code, we're able to check if it's correct or not. And this is really important um, because it really motivated us to build Chef because we know that Convex has great abstractions, and so we knew that we could build an awesome platform uh, using Convex. So uh, now I'm going to show you around a Chef app that I built. Okay, so. All right, let me see. All right, perfect. All right, so this is Chef. So on the left, um, we have a, uh, a chat box, and here you can type in uh, whatever application you wanna make. Uh, right here, I decided to make a collaborative text editor. Um, and then as you can see, that as um, the LLM starts to uh, create my app, it can look up documentation. And so here it adds two components, and convex components are composable um, parts, um, or compo composable pieces um, that you can add to any uh, convex app that you have to basically have drop-in functionality. And so it looks up docs that are in its context, then installs packages, and starts writing a ton of files. And so here's where this type checking piece comes in key. So right when the LLM is done uh, writing all of its code, we can say, see here that it type checks its code, and it does get some errors. So then it goes in, and it can edit the files, and then push out a correct result. And so this is what really makes Convex special, because at the, the LLM can keep on going until it gets to a good state. So some of the other cool things about Chef are that we have like the database tab here, so you can see um, like all the data changing um, as it uh, updates. And then we have down here, we have recipes. And so these are different convex components that you can add for um, to create new functionality in your app. And then a little enhance prompt button that will allow you to um, make uh, your prompts better. And then I deployed this app. So if we go back here to like the demo page, uh, we can see that if you actually just go to this app right here on your phone, if you want to, I don't know if anybody wants to do that, but uh, you can actually see this, um, the app that I built in action. Okay, so now I'm going to dive into a few of the learnings um, that I've had building Chef. So the first thing is that abstractions matter. So what's really important is that LLMs, they perform better when they have to make less decisions. Um, a great example of this is we, we had to scope down our component APIs when building Chef. So um, we originally, like our, a lot of our components have all these different options. And so with all these different options, the LLMs often got confused when trying to pick one thing over another. And so we had to be pretty opinionated about what we thought the best thing was and make sure that the, the decisions the LLM was making, were making was like, and um, that the decisions were uh, just like, the decisions about, okay, like should I build this thing or this thing? Not about, oh, like what arguments should I pass into a specific function? And so um, kind of building off of that, we, you, ha you should have a clear separation between the functionality of tools. So when you're building these, like, um, these agents, um, they have a variety of tools that they can access. And you wanna make sure that each of these tools, it's like very clear what they do and, not, and make it such that they don't have any overlap. That way, and when the LLM gets into a specific situation and knows, hey, I should use this thing or this thing, not, oh, like it gets confused and gets into a loop. Um, the last thing is uh, like a delicate balance between creating abstractions and not hindering functionality. Uh, so uh, going back to this like idea of tools, uh, it's, it can be like very easy to uh, give an LLM a ton of tools and be like, hey, like you can do all these different things. But what's really important is if you can distill these, uh, all these like different functionalities into about like five tools, for example, and so that the LLM can still be very powerful, but still have, um, still not get into a bad state. So um, the next principle I've learned is making it hard to do the wrong thing. So this is something we experienced in Chef. You, you really want to prevent actions that create bad states. Um, so uh, an example of this is that when we were building Chef, uh, we were like very opinionated about the, uh, uh, about the template that we used. 
Uh, and so this template, that we, this template uh, automatically included auth. And as you know, um, auth is very hard. And so we would often see the LLM try to um, edit these auth files, and 90% of the time it would get into a bad state. So we had to programmatically prevent the LLM from editing those files. And we saw that we were able to eliminate a whole class of problems. And so when you can kind of apply that type of thinking um, to building agents, then you can really um, make sure that it, it goes down the right path most of the time. And then the second thing is like, uh, of course, very specific, uh, or I guess it's not specific to Chef, but it's something that we definitely like leverage um, with like it being built on Convex is that we're able to provide good feedback to the LLM. And so this is uh, super cool because the LLM can do something, it can then check whether it's right or not, and then we can give it feedback saying, hey, this, these are the reasons that it's wrong, this API is incorrect, and then it can go back and fix it. And so this is where I feel like it really makes it magical because then not only can the LLM like do something that's super cool, but it can actually continue to check if it's right and keep on um, iterating until it gets to a good state. Another principle that I've learned is great examples lead to better results. So LLMs are really good at pattern matching. They're good at matching good patterns, but, but also matching bad patterns. And so like, an example that I had is that I built out convex evals, which is our um, eval set that um, evaluates different LLMs against the convex platform and how good they can write code. And whenever, um, when I was writing them, uh, I one time had like one bad example among a bunch of good examples. And I was wondering, hey, why is the LLM always writing code incorrectly? Uh, and so I like realized, I was like, oh, it has this one, one bad example. And so it's really important that you're really paying attention to the different examples that you give an LLM because it can um, really affect the, um, the output that it gives. Um, and the next thing is being really opinionated about what good versus bad looks like. I think that a lot of times there's like a lot of ways to do something good and a lot of ways to do something bad. When you're working with LLMs, it's important that you find like the way that you think something should be done and like have all the examples be like exactly that way. That way when an LLM is, is writing code or doing whatever your product calls for, then it can like know I should be doing this thing, not like, oh, I need to make a decision between all these different ways that it gave me to do a certain task. And the last thing is, uh, Examples should be simple and consistent. And so these each example should be very clear about a certain competency that you're trying to give to the agent because then it can like follow these patterns in different situations and you want them to be consistent so you're not uh, providing bad examples. Okay, so um, yeah, this is the last principle I've learned and it's that evals are the secret sauce. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what evals are first, and then I'm going to uh, talk about these points. So evals are a quant quantitative way for you to um, evaluate LLMs against a data set. Um, and so it allows you to, uh, to see um, how well um, LLMs perform against your product or, or with your agent. And so um, how this works is that you have an expected uh, input and output, and then like scoring functions. So you're able to um, basically run an LLM against a certain task, and then you're able to see the, the output and then compare that like, and then score that using a um, certain function. And so what's really cool about this is that you'll get certain numbers like, hey, um, we saw that, th that this uh, agent with this LLM was able to um, deploy this app and, and successfully type check, or it had five deploys until it was successful. And so this is kind of what we use to evaluate Chef and evaluate new models. And so what's really cool about having evals is that it makes you get really clear about what good, good looks like for your product so that you um, have these like really clear metrics. And you can be quicker and more confident with your iteration on prompts because prompts are always changing and having a good way to say, hey, did this make my agent better or worse is really important. And the last thing is that models are always changing. So this means like, yeah, when Sonnet 4 came out, it like caused a step function change and in, um, in building apps with Chef. And we wouldn't have been able to integrate this in the product fast if we didn't understand how well it performed. And so us having evals made it like, made it super quick, like within, I think like an hour or two, we were able to say, hey, Sonnet 4 is way better than the other models we've been using, being able to integrate that into the product. Okay, so um, now that I've gone over those four principles, I'd like to leave you with one thing, and that's that LLMs become magical with the right guardrails. And I think this like with the right guardrails is extremely important because if you aren't thoughtful about the abstractions and the evals and all the different things when you're building a model and they, they, or building an agent, then they can go off and have kind of unreliable um, outputs in a, in a variety of different situations. But when you put these um, different guardrails in place, it really allows you to um, unlock the magic of LLMs and perform tasks that we, um, I previously didn't think were possible. 
So yeah, I'm gonna leave you guys with this meme and uh, thanks for listening to my talk.